Cyclone Darian, a very impressive Category 4 storm on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 21st. Well, here we are with an extremely strong Cyclone Darien, which sprang out of nowhere. Uh, the 92nd storm of the year really looks like it's going to put this year out with a bang if we don't get anything else. Uh, code blue, in effect, not for Darien, but for another system near Australia, which we'll look at in a moment. In the Atlantic, though, there's nothing going on here. 162 days until hurricane season, so keep counting and let's hope that doesn't arrive sooner than we want it to um, after the year we've had this year. Let's look now at the Australian region and this is a 40% chance that we've now designated in a Timor Sea uh, that could develop into a tropical cyclone. GFS is most keen with it, other models a little bit um, more cautious uh, but it could be a significant rainmaker for that area and that is the code blue system. Darien is not code blue because it is out at sea and shouldn't affect any land areas at all during its life which could be rather lengthy. Um, suggestions that it may last for another 10 days before turning post-tropical and has looked very good on satellite imagery which we'll show you just in a moment. And in the North Indian Ocean um, a reignition of a 30% chance here uh, for the system we've been tracking for days and days in the Bay of Bengal that could eventually wind up becoming a tropical cyclone as it heads towards Sri Lanka, uh, meandering around on its way there. Let's check the satellite imagery across the Atlantic Ocean. This is how it looks right now and you can see uh, just a few areas of moisture, particularly across Florida and the southeastern United States, feeding into another system out towards the east there over the Atlantic Ocean, but generally it's dry air that's in domination right now. In the eastern Pacific it's the same story, uh, particularly further south, but out in the open waters you can see a big atmospheric river there uh, pushing up northwards and then eventually towards the northwestern United States. Not so much in California today, uh, but it's mainly the Pacific Northwest. Arizona though getting quite a bit right now. Well, here is Cyclone Darien, which has been looking much more impressive on satellite imagery. This is the last 24 hours. You see how ragged it was compared to the last few hours there. And it's gotten a lot more rounded. Um, it's gotten more uniform in terms of its cloud tops around all sides. We'll take a look at the superior round imagery shortly to take a proper look at it. But you can see just by its shape, it's been looking much better. And definitely with its movement, it's turned a lot more towards the west. In fact, it is due west, if not maybe a slight northward element there in the last frames and this is the ram imagery showing just how uh, impressive it's been looking some suggestions from um a satellite estimates that it may be a category 5 well it certainly isn't quite that strong but we are giving it 150 miles per hour at this update and that's something that we've had up for a few hours now it looks like it is on its way down again just a little bit but we'll keep watching Western Pacific, there's this system that's still off the coast of the Philippines, nothing that we're uh, tagging, uh, but you can see there off the uh, eastern coast of uh, Samar particularly, uh, quite a lot of heavy weather. Uh, a little disturbance near Guam as well, which I believe our CAT team have marked as a 10% as it moves towards the northwest wide shot of the Indian Ocean and you can see those two systems that we'll be tracking there. Darwin of course very clear to see uh, towards the southern part of the image and in the Bay of Bengal up north there that other system which is rotating a little bit better but convection still very much all over the place. We might be able to see the beginnings of this new system near Australia as well, forming quite, quite close to East Timor actually, um, and we eventually will turn southwards and reach the Australian coast. There's already quite a lot of thunderstorms occurring over the top end of Australia right now, which isn't related to this potential system. Sea surface temperatures right now, looking into the central Pacific there, they're still quite warm, 26 to 28 degrees in a lot of those places. Eastern Pacific over 28 degrees but nothing will take advantage of it anymore. Same too for the Caribbean Sea. Interesting to see just how warm those SSTs still are though. I believe it's quite a bit above average still in the Atlantic Ocean but it most likely will mean naught. 
in the Eastern Hemisphere, the Indian Ocean, where Darien is right now, it's over around 27 degree waters, so it's uh, not far from the bottom of the image, and it will start entering warmer waters again as it continues to move westwards. So if it's done this well so far over quite cool SSTs, it's going to get potentially even better for it over the warmer ones in a few days. Philippine Sea also remaining warm, pushing 30 degrees in a few locations there as well, and the Australian region really up and ready for that potential system in the Timor Sea over 30 degrees Celsius waters there. The anomalies are also above average, particularly in the South Pacific and in the Western Pacific, and also in parts of the Atlantic Ocean. La Nina effect is very much still there, but certainly not the strength that it previously was a few months ago, but still there nonetheless. And the oceanic heat content, uh, we've got quite a few, uh, quite large amounts there in the uh, South Pacific, which is gradually extending into the Coral Sea and towards Fiji and uh, uh, Samoa. And in the Western Pacific there, there's still a few spots for potential late season activity, looking vanishingly unlikely that we'll see anything happen in the Western Pacific now uh, towards the back end of this year. So let's check the GFS model for the next five days. First of all, the Bay of Bengal region. Look out for that rotation. Well, it's an extremely elongated one there, but one that might just about uh, get itself together by the time it drops back down again and reaches Sri Lanka. But what I'm not seeing on that imagery is any tropical storm force winds, which would be marked in green, <coughs> something that we need to look out for there. But it doesn't look like that's going to become a tropical cyclone. But nonetheless, uh, still signs of that rotation in visible imagery as well as this forecast model run. Darien there is quite easy to spot and it moves westward maybe even slightly north and then continues for quite a while actually a few days there and intensifying again as it starts to round another corner turns southwards and then jogs back towards the southeast towards the end of that five day period on the second time of the running here look towards the southwest and you can see that other system there non-tropical in origin but potentially a tropical cyclone candidate that forms out of that in the subtropical latitudes something interesting to look out for in the next two days now. Longer range, this is after Christmas now, up towards day 10, and you can see it moving, maybe even a third peak there, and does make a little jaunt towards the Masserine Islands, but eventually it does sink southwards, far, far away from reaching them, and uh, it should be a storm that remains quite comfortably out to sea, and by the end of the uh, 30th of December there, I think it was, uh, it is still a tropical cyclone, but really its days are numbered, as it uh, heads down towards 30 degrees south, still with Hogan Force winds as well. That's the serious stuff done with. You can take a look at the Force 13 store by scanning that barcode in the top right and uh, taking a look at what we have, our pillows, our hoodies for the winter, and our still waiting for Hone t-shirts, which will probably be completely gathered in dust by the time Hone actually forms. In the silly range, what else happens to Darien? Well, it doesn't do that much that you would un uh, that you would not expect. It ends up forming into an extratropical cyclone. They're falling in with one actually uh, in the early days of January. And I think the big question with Darien right now is, will it survive into 2023? Well, this model run suggests that it actually might. There it is on the 2nd of January getting consumed by that extratropical front. But I believe the latest run uh, sorry, the previous run actually didn't have it lasting that long. Interesting. Also interesting is what happened on this day in 1994. Uh, Typhoon Axel was a Category 3, making landfall in the Visayas region of the Philippines. And to its east, bigger but much weaker, uh, Tropical Storm Bobby was near its peak of around 45 to 50 miles per hour. Axel was a Category 4 just before uh, the 21st and eventually made landfall later in the day as a Category 3 storm and then rapidly weakened. Interesting how we don't really remember that one, um, but it was a major typhoon landfall on the Philippine Islands on this day. Well, back to today and the next name in the Atlantic naming list probably won't be Owen because it looks like we'll be going on to the next naming list soon. In the Eastern Pacific, Seymour if there's a late clincher and in the Central Pacific, Hone is still the next name no matter what year it is going to be. In the Western Pacific, next up is Sanvu, the North Indian Ocean. We'll see Mocha in the next name on its list. 
and those two naming lists uh, will continue where they left off when we enter 2023. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in the Australian region is Ellie, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Chiniso, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>